Aurora's search for a new police chief goes back to square one. We're breaking down what's next in the process as community activists weigh in. So our goal moving forward is to be proactive and not reactive. For Marshall fire victims, the rebuilding process is a slow burn. We totally understand it. I think we're fortunate that we're just building on the same footprint. Tonight, an update from the first family to get a permit on how the process is shaping up. We are really excited to be home. Plus, wild horses needing support. These girls really stood out as needing help. How you can make sure these mother mares get the care they need in Weld County. It's a hard situation to see him in because they don't deserve it. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. And I'm Amy Wattis. Tonight, the city of Aurora has decided to continue, continue its search for a new police chief and not move forward with the two finalists named in August. In a statement, the city says David Franklin withdrew after a three-day final selection process. They add that Scott Ebner did not, quote, have the necessary support to proceed in the process. The decision comes after a city council meeting Monday night following an outcry from community leaders who felt the city did not make enough effort to include diverse candidates. In their statement, city manager Jim Twombly says he's, quote, listened to a lot of feedback from community members and city council. He added that he wants to make sure whoever is chosen, quote, be held to serving every member of the community equitably. And while some living in Aurora questioned the selection process before tonight's announcement, APD is taking proactive steps to build community trust. We're learning details about plans for a series of community meetings. Shanna Shaw, a community liaison between residents and the police department, says the meetings will begin this month and will happen every few weeks until the end of the year. I'm grateful for the opportunity and the fact that there's a want to repair the things that we know exist within the city of Aurora and the police department and the community. Shaw says one of those events will be held at Globe, Global Village Academy. An official date hasn't been given and we'll let you know as soon as it's set. Well, Denver 7 has been closely following this search for Aurora's next police chief and we'll bring you more community reaction tonight at 10 and on Denver7.com. Aurora City leaders are in San Antonio, Texas to learn about that city's approach to homelessness. They will visit San Antonio's 22 acre Haven for Hope campus. The campus is a one stop shop that brings multiple services to a central location. The campus has a shelter, medical care, education and child care. Aurora's recent ban on homeless camps requires the city to have adequate shelter space and they hope to use San Antonio's campus as a model for the city. The Aurora City Council will discuss the trip at a study session later this month. Parents and students are meeting right now about schools slated to close in Jefferson County. Jeffco Public Schools wants to close more than a dozen schools because of declining enrollment. The district says some schools only have enough students to fill one classroom per grade. The district says these meetings are a chance for families from the consolidating schools to meet each other. Our enrollment is just at a, in a place where it um, continues to, to decline and as we look to the future and the resources that we want to provide in our schools, um, you know, co consolidating, closing some schools was really the only way that we, could, we can get there. About a dozen more meetings are scheduled throughout the month. A public hearing will be held later this month and in early November. The board plans to make the final decision about the closures at its meeting on November 10th. Since the Marshall Fire in Boulder County damaged and destroyed more than 1,000 homes back in January, it's been a slow process to rebuild. With only about 10% of the lost homes having rebuilding permits, Denver 7's Christian Lopez caught up with one of the first families to get one to see their process, progress. And as we pulled out the driveway, the fire was right there. We took one last picture of the house and drove away. You may remember Pam and Dan Decker, the first couple in unincorporated Boulder County who got a permit to rebuild their home back in May. Just, uh, Tears of joy. Before they were just tears of sorrow. Fast forward to now. We are standing in the kitchen right now. Yeah, and then you go back into bedrooms. All the framing is just brand new. 
within the last couple of weeks. So it's been very, very exciting to see it. To, to be able to be this far along. The new house will look very similar to the one they lost during the Marshall Fire. This time, though, they are adding things like fire sprinklers, concrete siding, and replacing the wood decks with a concrete patio to make sure that their house is protected in case of another fire. For the Deckers, choosing to rebuild was an easy decision. It's where our kids have been, our three children have been, the grandchildren. It's just always been home and it has so many memories that we can't leave it. This is what we know as home. But it hasn't been easy for their neighbors. Only 13 other rebuilding permits have been issued in unincorporated Boulder County, 50 in Louisville, and 42 in Superior. Everybody started uh, ambitiously in, in the spring and said, you know, I'm going to do this. And, and you know what they've realized is it's a tremendous amount of work in terms of finding an architect, finding a general contractor, picking out finishes, picking out everything that goes back into a house. Some have decided to leave and just to sell. Others are in the process. If they're building, they've still got to go through that lengthy process of, you know, what's what's right, what is, and, and all the codes that are required. I think the, the reason we've been pushing so hard for rebates on use taxes and cutting the fees on permits and removing these you know, more expensive codes is that you know, we know people are looking at insurance cap, but we really want the original homeowners to come back. The Deckers are hopeful they'll be back home yeah. early next year. So yeah, very exciting. In Boulder County, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Let's give you some more context on what it takes to get a rebuilding permit using the town of Superior as an example. So first you must create an account through their permit portal called Community Core. From there, you submit an application for demolition and after the town issues a demo permit, only then can you submit a rebuilding permit for application. If you have a contractor, they must be certified through the town before officials verify the application is complete and the site is ready for rebuild. And then you then have to pay any fees. The town has to review and approve your plans and verify demolition is complete. Now, once all of these steps have been taken, a rebuilding permit can be given. And I took a look at our archives to see what the rebuilding process was like after the Waldo Canyon fire in Colorado Springs. And that fire destroyed 700 fewer homes, but it shared the same urban interface landscape. And at this point in that recovery process, several homes were already being rebuilt compared to just the first one from the Marshall Fire. Now that should change soon with the 106 rebuilding permits that have been approved across Louisville, Superior and unincorporated Boulder County. Louisville police say they need your help after these three suspects after these suspects, I should say, broke into marijuana dispensaries in Louisville and neighboring cities. The burglaries happened last Tuesday and Sunday. Police say the suspects drove away in a Kia Sportage with a Georgia license plate. Now, if you know anything, call Louisville police or Northern Colorado Crime Stoppers. A 17 year old will be charged as an adult for allegedly shooting and killing a man while driving on I-70. 31 year old Kevin Piaskowski was killed in that shooting back in July. Police say in August they arrested 17 year old Jaleel James. And today it was announced that he will be charged with first degree murder. We don't know what led up to the shooting. Police have sealed the affidavit, which would have given us some context. Hurricane Ian's death toll is rising as crews in Florida intensify their search for survivors. At least 104 have been killed. As search and recovery efforts continue in southwest Florida following Hurricane Ian's wrath, survivors are sharing their, their stories. Now, we spoke with Karen Kader and by phone Tuesday, she hunkered down at her home in Fort Myers Beach after thinking the storm would hit farther north of her. In the picture you see on your screen, you can see Karen's feet, it's unbelievable to look at this, touching a window as she floated on an air mattress in 12 feet of water. At one point, she recalls the fridge falling over and the ceiling coming down on top of her. Her daughter, Laura Miller, waited helplessly in Denver after waiting 30 hours to hear from her again. I was terrified. Like, I just kept picturing her in the house with it flooding or her being swept out of the house with the winds. 
Laura started a GoFundMe for her mother as she lost everything and needs somewhere to stay. If you'd like to help, we have a link to it on Denver7.com. Denver 7 Gives is partnering with the Scripps Howard Fund for Hurricane Relief. You can make a donation by texting STORM to 50155 and then following the prompts. You can also scan at the QR code on your screen or visit denver7.com slash hurricane relief. A Weld County woman is doing whatever she can to save three likely pregnant horses from an otherwise unknown fate. But she says the price to rescue these animals is pretty high. Yeah, it sure is. And I had the chance to talk to her about her mission and the help she's looking for. Morgan Ryan is a horse lover through and through. She recently turned her love into making a difference by creating a horse rescue called Mojo Acres, which is an alt just outside of Greeley. Her most recent mission is saving these three Mustang mares. So here's three BLM Mustang mares and they appear to be pregnant. For some reason, these girls really stood out as needing help. She found them on this kill pen website in Oklahoma. It's not just the three lives, it's, you know, possibly six lives that might not have a chance. Morgan said a horse will sometimes end up at a kill pen if their owner can't take care of them anymore. It's illegal to slaughter and consume horses in the U.S., so she said a kill pen will either ship their horses to Mexico or Canada unless someone steps in before that happens. There are some kill pens that will list them on their sites saying, hey, this horse has three days. This is their fee. If you want to pay it, you can come take this horse off our hands. That's where Morgan says her angel donor came in. Nothing actually feels better than messaging a um, kill pen. Claire Staples of Sky Dog Sanctuary based out of Oregon paid $875 for each horse to get them out of the kill pen and into quarantine in Kansas for a few weeks before they're sent to Morgan's rescue. Sending the money to get three, in this case, more horses out of um, these horrible situations where these horses get so sick. Morgan says she wouldn't have been able to do this without Claire's help. I'm call her an angel donor and she really was was an angel. It was just no questions asked and they were safe. The challenge Morgan says she's up against now is paying thousands of dollars for their expenses while they're in quarantine, transporting them to Colorado and caring for them once they arrive at her rescue. That's why she started a GoFundMe goal of $4,500 to help ease the burden. We don't know what kind of condition they're going to come in. We want to do what we can. Help to get these three Mustang mares happy and healthy before they're adopted out to a good home. Amy Wattis, Denver 7. Tom Morgan says her hope is to get the horses to her rescue in Colorado in just a few weeks. If you would like to help Mojo Acres and those Mustangs, we have a link to the facilities GoFundMe up right now on Denver7.com. A bit of a cool one today, but there's warmer weather ahead in the seven day forecast. A Denver legend who paved the way for musicians of color. Thank you to everything you've done in this world to support all students. The special 102nd birthday celebration for the first black member of an American symphony. I love each and every one of you because this is magnificent. Thank you, thank you, thank you.